we we have to do a mail day episode because a lot of people sent in mail since the last one so let's explore 10 or 12 different items of viewer mail learn something new and enjoy the conversation on this episode of hashtag flatly dive into some particular mail items I just want to do a quick follow-up on some of the things that we discussed in the previous mail day episode for instance last episode I discussed lenticular postcards Leah from Spain or she was in Norway at the time sent me a lenticular postcard and I expressed how much I enjoyed these 3d type of postcards well it turns out a lot of you do as well so I got a number of lenticular postcards in the mail check these out This one was sent from Jacques in Arizona, an image of the Arizona State Bird, the Cactus Rain. Regan in New York sent me this forest scene. Andrew in Vietnam sent me this beautiful postcard. Jan in Romania sent me the saber-toothed tiger, that's really cool. And Enrique sent me a few city scenes including San Diego and Waikiki. So thank you all of you, I really enjoy getting these in the mail. Also I got another flip-flop, uh, this one was sent from Chris and his wife. Uh, from Lincoln City, Oregon and underneath the flip-flop they put the address as well as a forever stamp and an additional $4.17 so this is almost $5 in postage uh, to send this flip-flop and on the top of the flip-flop they write Graham while on vacation in Lincoln City, Oregon my wife and I were eating at a seaside restaurant from our table my wife spotted this flip-flop in the sand we knew immediately what to do Thank you for your wonderful videos and rekindling my love of stamp collecting. Sincerely, Chris. This is excellent, Chris. Uh, Chris actually sent me an email with an image of the flip-flop in the sand where he found it. And apparently Chris actually had a hard time mailing this. The first time he approached the postal clerk, uh, they actually rejected it saying that it needs to be in an envelope in order to put it through the mail. So he waited the next day and got a different postal clerk who was more than eager to go ahead and cancel the stamp and place it in the mail stream. And of course we have a beautiful cancel here showing that it was sent in November from Lincoln City. So many thanks Chris, it's great to see that I'm the first thing that comes to mind when you see a dirty washed up flip-flop and I will go ahead and add this to my flip-flop collection, I, I guess I have now. So this is great, thank you. Also remember in the last mail day episode we had a great conversation about aerograms. Postal stationery that is issued by postal services with the intent to be sent via airmail at a reduced cost. Well, I had ended that discussion with an ask to all of you because I didn't know if there were any countries that were still issuing aerograms. And the viewers of Australia have answered my question. <laughs> I actually got a few more than just four of these. Um, they're somewhere in this box here, but I got a few of these particular aerograms. These are quite lovely aerograms featuring purple tassels, uh, an Australian wildflower. And you can see that the aerogram includes this as a cachet as well as the postage stamp. Although it looks like this design can easily throw off the postmarking machine. As you can see that the OzPost postmarking machine hit the bottom left of two of these aerograms. But this one got what looks to be a lovely hand stamp cancel from Richmond in Tasmania. And overall I am impressed that Australia is still issuing aerograms. But as many of you stated in these letters, you don't know how much longer that will be for. Uh, this may even be the last one, who knows. So many thanks Alex, Julie, Kerry and Liam who sent these particular ones from Australia as well as anyone else that may have sent me one and I just can't find it in my box right now. But that answers the question. There is still a country, at least one, still issuing aerograms uh, today. Cool. I 
think the last mail day episode was before Christmas. So follow up on that is I got a lot of cool Christmas stuff from people all over the world. I know, I know, this is March and we're catching up, so I'll keep this to a minimum. But one item I do want to quickly show you is this cigar box that was sent to me by the person that runs the Stamp Lux Instagram account. And it's actually an advent calendar that they put together. When I opened up the cigar box, there was a couple cool items in there, including this little magnifying glass, as well as a letter opener and a bunch of numbered envelopes with a letter. And so the letter read that I had been given this adventure to count down the end of another year. Each day, open a letter from me. There'll be either stamps or a mailed envelope, a cover for you to examine, as well as a poem and note. This was a really neat idea, something that maybe you can consider doing for someone else in the next holiday season or for any occasion, really put together a little treasure box such as this, filled with different envelopes and stamps and covers that maybe you can introduce somebody else to philately, or maybe just a fun family activity, allowing you all to go through an adventure and explore the world through a variety of postal history that you've curated and put together. I can see something like this being used maybe for school or whatever, and I think this was really creative for you to find a way to incorporate stamps into an activity such as this allowing stamps to do what they do best, teach us about the world and its history. So thank you, uh, the Stamp Lux Instagram account. I'll put that link in the video description. Okay, I'm really looking forward to this one. This is from Patrick uh, in Japan, and Patrick sent me a, I think it's a full sheet of definitive stamps. It's like a little postal bear. So Patrick writes to me, he says, Konnichiwa from the land of the rising sun, Graham. I really enjoy your YouTube videos and since you got me into philately, I thought I should send you some stamps. Two of my three favorite hobbies are studying Japanese and stamp collecting. So I was really happy to see an article about a new stamp in the Asahi Shogakesi Shimban, the Asahi Elementary Student Newspaper. I subscribe to it and practice my Japanese. Apparently, Ever since 1951, there was only one design for the 1 yen stamp. It features Hisoka Majima, the founder of Japan's postal system. But this changed last year when Japan Post released a second design featuring Japan Post mascot Basu Kuma. Sorry for my terrible Japanese pronunciations. As I understand it, the Paso Kuma design is limited to 2 million sheets, so I don't know how long it'll be available. It seems that people really prefer the new design as Paso Kuma is very cute, and his Soka Majima looks rather serious in his portrait. Actually, Patrick also sent me an example of the Hisoka Majima stamp. Uh, here it is. Super recognizable if you collect stamps. You should find this in everybody's collection. As Patrick mentions, this is the definitive that has been showing up on Japanese mail since the 1950s. And it's no surprise that this postal bear is a little more popular than Hisoka Majima. One is cute and happy, and the other one is, is not cute and happy, I guess. I think you just taught me and a number of viewers something new here, Patrick, because like I said, this stamp is very common and instantly recognizable to many stamp collectors, but several of us, including myself, didn't know exactly who he was, the founder of Japan's postal system. Patrick continues to say, anyway, thank you so much for your excellent videos and for getting me into the hobby. I look forward to building a collection of Japanese stamps over prints, which so perfectly capture a moment in history, and especially stamps over printed by Japan back in the days of the empire. Please keep up the great work and enjoy these stamps. Thanks again, your fan, Patrick Ferguson. Patrick, thank you so much. I will treasure these stamps and of course, I look forward to learning more about Japanese philately and postal history. Okay, I got a couple of items from Jose and Sophia. Dear Graham, I hope that you are well. Myself and my daughter love your channel and we have been following for a long time. In fact, thanks to you, I've reopened my stamp collection that I started when I was a child with my grandfather in Madrid, Spain. 
We enjoyed weekends in the Plaza Mayor, buying and exchanging stamps with other Philately fans. Now this pleasure is shared with my daughter in the UK where we live, thanks to you. Very cool, thank you. A few months ago, I created a little project to illustrate the evolution of the pillar boxes in Britain from their origin until the present day. I hope they enjoy the poster and the postal cards. I am sending them to you as a sign of my appreciation of your channel, which I hope you'll continue for years to come. All the best, Jose and Sophia. Now that's pretty neat. Let me check these out. These are really great quality and really neat illustrations of the evolution of the iconic pillar box. Each postcard here has, I guess, its name and the year it came into being. And I really love the design, or at least the style of these postcards. But I'd feel pretty bad using them because they're like little pieces of art. And then I set a poster. All right. Oh, this is neat. Look at this. There we go. Whenever I'm in the UK or anywhere else abroad where they're using pillar post boxes with the Royal Cipher, it usually captures my attention uh, and draws me in to look further. The UK, for example, has kept its pillar post boxes that were put up over the last hundred plus years. And it really adds character to villages, towns, and so on, seeing these old post boxes. Actually, if you're interested in seeing some cool post boxes, check out the hashtag Postbox Saturday, which is pretty popular on Twitter and Instagram on, of course, a Saturday. Uh, if you have an image of a post box, whether you're on vacation and you see a really cool post box, or you've got one that's in your town or down the street from you that you want to take a picture of and display it for the rest of the world to see, go ahead and do that and post it online with hashtag Postbox Saturday. This is something that I know Dinah from the Handwritten Letter Appreciation Society either started or she's the custodian of the hashtag. If custodians of hashtags exist. But yeah, this is a really cool hashtag to follow and it's super popular. So check it out. I'll leave a link or two in the video description for you to check out more. So this is really cool and it's gonna make me feel a little less bad about using these because I really wanna use these postcards in the mail uh, to my friends and of course viewers that write to me. So thank you both Jose and Sophia. I need to find a place to put this up. This is, this is really interesting. This is from Ujan, who has written to the channel before, Ujan from India. And Ujan writes, Dear Graham, hope this letter will find you in good health and spirit. It does. Thank you. By the way, look at this. Is this, is this computer font or is this handwritten? This is incredibly well written. Uh, it's handwritten. So yeah, really good handwriting, Ujan. Anyway, I'm here in the post box of yours once more. Hope you will enjoy this. I've got something for you to explore. In India, four different types of postcards are available. Those are normal postcard, meg doot postcard, printed postcard, and competition postcard. Among them, the meg doot, meg doot, meg doot, I don't know if I'm saying that right, meg doot and competition postcards are something very interesting. Meg doot postcards contain a four colored advertisement on the left side of the address space. The price of a Megdoot postcard is half of a normal postcard, but the advertiser has to pay a sum of two Indian rupees for each postcard. I've managed to find and send you a Megdoot postcard. So actually, yeah, Ujang gave me three postcards. This one right here is the Megdoot postcard with the advertisement on the left-hand side. And of course it has a pre-printed stamp, which as Ujan says, is half the rate of a regular postcard. I've never seen that before where you could have an advertisement on a postcard, but it reduces the rate to send the postcard, of course, being sponsored by the company that is advertising. Since you're writing the address on the side, you still would have a full card to write on on the other side. 
Now, Ujang goes on to say that the standard postcard is also included here. Well, it's a pre-printed stamp on the postcard, so just another form of postal stationery issued by Indian Post. It has Mahatma Gandhi as the pre-printed stamp. It also has a nice little advertisement of its own philately king of hobbies, collect India postage stamps, contact nearest philatelic bureau. That is pretty neat. But then Ujan also included a competition postcard. Now the competition postcard is something that I don't have any information about. Now I want you to explore about this. I have included a competition postcard with this letter. Okay, so Ujan, I was looking into this. This is really, really interesting. The concept of a competition postcard. Now, back in the 1990s, actually in 1990, India had a TV show called Surabi. Surabi. Apparently this was a weekly culture show that showcased the many different parts of India as well as the Indian people that lived there. Namaskar. It was super popular and apparently one of the reasons why it was so popular is that it had this quiz at the end of the show that you could write into uh, to provide your answers. So it encouraged viewer participation, but it was so popular that it somewhat overwhelmed the Indian Postal Service. In one week, it actually received 1.4 million letter responses, which is crazy and that actually broke a record at that time. So the Indian Postal Service actually had a brilliant idea. They made a specific postcard for the show and they made it in a different color so that it stood out and you could only respond or write into the show with this particular postcard. Now the Indian Postal Service actually charged a lot more money for this postcard than a standard postcard. This was about 13 times the price of the standard postcard at the time, which was 15 pesa. This was two Indian rupees, which does a couple of different things. One, it discourages you from sending in a lot of different responses just to try and win the competition. You'd have to be more thoughtful to your one or two responses that you're actually going to submit. And two, it gives India Post the opportunity to make a lot more profit off of a single postcard and cash in with this craze. So of course, this was before the days of email or even social media. For instance, today we could easily tweet into our favorite shows uh, a comment or an answer to a quiz. This was of course prior to that and the Indian Postal Service was accessible to everyone in India versus other technologies that may not have been out yet, especially in the early 90s. Uh, the TV show had started in 1990, 1993, this competition postcard made a scene and began to be used by other TV radio or even just the regular press programs and columns uh, where you get to write in either answering a question or asking a question. Uh, so these became super popular right until 2006 when they were at that point being sold at the rate of 10 Indian rupees. So it had gone up tremendously but had made way for of course the new technologies that were coming out. Of course email was probably more prevalent. So this concept was retired in 2006. I had never heard of this before. I had never known about it. I see that you can actually get these unused online. It makes me wonder if you can get them used. Were any of these TV programs or any of these radio shows or columns actually keeping these cards and then maybe made it available for collectors to get a hold of? I don't know. I wonder if you can get a used one. But you can certainly get an unused competition postcard that was in use from 1993 to 2006 the predecessor of email or Twitter as we communicate with our favorite shows today. Ujan finishes up by saying, that's all I wanted to say. Goodbye for now. Accept my love and support towards your channel, your Indian subscriber, Ujan. Many thanks, Ujan. And I think a lot of my audience just learned about competition postcards as well as the Megdoot postcard. I hope I'm saying that right. But um, this was really cool. Appreciate it. Thanks. Here's a, here's a special one. Check this out. This is a postcard featuring a photograph of Cheslov Slanya, who many of you already know who he is, but for those of you who don't, this is a name you should get familiar with in the stamp collecting world. Cheslov Slanya is considered to be one of the best, if not the best, engravers of all time well known in the philatelic universe. He engraved over a thousand stamps for over 30 different countries. And they are some of the most incredible pieces of artwork that the philatelic world has ever seen. 
Now, Czeslav Steiner passed away in 2005, but it was just recently in 2021, October, that we had the celebration for the centenary of his birth. For the celebration of the centenary, this particular photograph was used on a joint issue by Denmark, the Faroe Islands, and Greenland, in which another famous engraver, Martin Mork, engraved the artwork inspired by this photograph, of course, and was used on those three stamps. I, I actually met Martin Mork when I was at the London 2022 stamp show, uh, and I got a signed printing of this Czeslav Slania image. I also had a really good discussion with him, but I'll talk more about that at a later time. Now, this particular postcard was sent to me by the actual photographer who took this image. This is Wayne Chen, and here's a photo of him with Czeslav Slania. Wayne took this photo at the Pacific 97 Stamp Exhibition in San Francisco back in 1997. And it was used in an article that he wrote for Linz, which eventually got identified as the desired image that they wanted to use on this centenary postage stamp joint issue. Now, a couple of cool things about Czeslav Slania. One, you can go ahead and learn about his fascinating life through a number of different sources, including Ted the Talking Stamp Collector, who has done a video about him and his life, as well as Lisa from Stamp Cat Stamps, who did an interview of Wayne, who took this photograph. So you can go ahead and watch that on her channel. Also, I met with Czeslav Slania's daughter, Liv Slania, in London 2022 for the show. I had a wonderful discussion with Liv in London about her father, about growing up with him, uh, as well as her desire to share his story uh, with others. And she has done so in an interesting interview that I'll post the link to in the video description. If you're taking an interest in engravers, especially with Czeslav Slania and the incredible work that he's done, go and watch Liv's discussion on him and his incredible life. She also presented me with this beautiful Cinderella souvenir folder in which she played a role in designing these three stamps celebrating the centenary of her father's birth. There's a description for each of the stamps. Uh, on the left here, it says that this is a Poland tribute during World War II. Czeslaw joined the Polish resistance. He helped the partisans, saving countless Jewish lives. He forged documents and Deutschmarks at night, painting them by hand as he hid from the Nazis. In the middle stamp, when Czeslaw was a teenager, he couldn't afford to have a photograph taken for his identity card. Instead, he drew a small self-portrait in pencil. It looked like a photograph and everyone thought it was real. <laughs> That's incredible. And then finally, the right stamp here, Sweden tribute. When Eisenhower was re-elected president in 1956, Czeslaw forged a dollar bill personalizing it for the new head of state. It was presented at an exhibition in Stockholm. A couple of weeks later, two CIA agents paid him a visit to ask where the factory was. They thought he had built a counterfeiting machine and was printing out banknotes. To prove his innocence, Cheslov spent a couple of days painting another dollar bill by hand under the watchful eyes of the agents. Like I said, Cheslov is a legend, uh, definitely a name that you should get familiar with and probably one that we will be discussing more on the channel in the future. And I'll put all those links for you to learn more in the video description. So definitely check them out. This one, this one's awesome. This is Gustavo who lives in Australia and he's written to the channel before, uh, but this is a custom postcard that of course he produced with a custom stamp. He is a bodybuilder uh, that collects stamps. Bodybuilders collect stamps. Look at him. Gustavo wrote to me telling me two things. One, this postcard is a special moment for him when he won first place at the Men's Physique Beginners in 2019. And in addition to other achievements, he's also ranked fourth place in South America Championship. Hope you like it and cheer for me in the next ones. Yes, absolutely, I'm cheering for you, Gustavo. He also discusses 
Philabris, the Brazilian Online Philatelic Association, which we've brought up before, and he's proud to say that now this ever free of fees association is running for 1,000 members. Uh, so I'll put links to Philabris again uh, in the video description, and it's always cool to find out what other stamp collectors are doing. In this case, Gustavo is winning bodybuilding championships. Stamp collecting, coolest hobby around. always exciting to get items from places that I don't usually get mail from. In this case, Lebanon. This is from Muzzin who actually sent me the entire stamp collection of Lebanon issued in 2021. Happy New Year. This is really neat. Look at them. Also, Mazen wrote to me saying, P.S. You have inspired me to start a new philatelic channel on YouTube in Arabic, as there are none that promote the hobby in the Arab world. Hey, that's really cool. If it's up and running, please post that in the comments so that we can see it and others can go ahead and check out your channel and subscribe. Thank you very much. Okay, I got this interesting cover from Fred, who is in France. And Fred wrote to me saying, Hi Graham, it seems that my envelope I sent in December with the cricket player's design did not reach you. This is quite sad. It did reach me, Fred. Um, it's wonderful. I just, I never got around to replying or letting you know that it arrived. I'm sorry. I get a lot of... Fred is of course a male artist and has sent some excellent artwork to the channel already. This is a wonderful edition featuring my favorite sport and a topic that I collect. Thank you, Fred. Now he goes on to write that he sent to Zanzibar mail to be resent to me direct, but the postmaster decided another way and sent it back to him. Luckily, they canceled it and I'm sending it to you with the copies of the forwarding mail. Now I hope that'll make its way to Piscataway. This is interesting. So. It's not uncommon for philatelists or postal enthusiasts to go ahead and create a cover or an envelope with the appropriate stamps and have that envelope mailed inside another letter uh, and sent to a different post office, whether it's somewhere else here in the US or to another country, and asking them to basically take the letter out and postmark it and drop it into the mail stream so that it makes its way to the intended recipient. Postmasters and postal workers shouldn't really have an issue with that, and at least I don't think they should, because after all, you are still paying for that service using the appropriate postage stamps. That's where things get really, really interesting with Fred's cover. Fred sent the postal service in Zanzibar this particular cover using of course Tanzania stamps which are used in Zanzibar and they feature a rhino which is great for my collection. But instead of the postal clerks just postmarking it and dropping it in the mail stream for me to receive in my PO box, they sent it back to Fred. But they cancelled it with a Zanzibar Tanzania postmark twice and to my delight this particular one is not perfect and married to the paper, just adding more authenticity behind this particular cover. Now these stamps featuring Disney characters, Goofy, Donald and Mickey on some kind of Mickey Mouse Safari Club, go back to our conversation that we're continually having about these legitimate or illegitimate stamps that might be issued by a third party. In this case, it's not Stamperia, but it is the IGPC. Let me get my computer. The IGPC stands for the Intergovernmental Philatelic Corporation. Quick summary, it's another company that produces stamps for countries. In this case, the IGPC has many clients, many different countries that it produces stamps for, but they often don't get sold in the country. They probably mostly don't get sold in the country that is issuing them. They primarily are targeting stamp collectors. So the question always comes up, are these real postage stamps if you can't really use them or buy them at a post office in the actual country that's issuing them? That's a whole long story. Anyway, corporations such as the IGPC and Stemperia pick usually unrelatable topics 
to the country that's issuing them. In this case, they're throwing Mickey Mouse with Goofy and Donald on a safari. Not totally unrelatable to Tanzania. I mean, you can go on safaris in Tanzania. There are rhinos in Tanzania. However, it's, of course, Disney-fied, appealing to Disney collectors. Tanzania is, of course, a client of IGPC, and I looked up on their website, the IGPC website, and it looks like this stamp were, these stamps were produced in 1994, Disney Safari. Um, however, they don't have images available, but these are them. So, where am I getting at with this? Well, this is going back to the point. Are these stamps actually usable in the country that it's said to be issued from? Maybe this is just out of the kindness of the postmaster or the postal clerks at the Zanzibar post offices uh, where they went ahead and postmarked uh, Fred's particular cover but then went and put it into their own envelope with their own stamps that of course are very legitimate and dropped that straight into the mail stream. These Tanzanian stamps, of course, include Queen Elizabeth II, uh, but some beautiful scenes of Zanzibar as well. So this is a very authentic cover. It actually includes some postmarks in the back as well. Oh, this was when it left Zanzibar and when it arrived in France. So what does that mean? I mean, it just continues this debate of are IGPC or Stamperia stamps legitimate? In this case, I would say no, these stamps weren't able to be dropped in the mail stream and they were still shipped internationally on the postmaster's dime back to Fred in France. So, wow. Of course, I've heard from other viewers who have written to me about their experiences trying to mail letters uh, with the stamps of IGPC or Stamperia and being rejected at the post offices from the countries that they are said to be issued from. Keep the conversation going in the comments. If you have additional stories that prove that they can't be used, uh, I want to hear them. And if you have stories that disprove that, that these stamps can actually be used in the country, I want to hear those as well. It's always a very interesting topic to discuss. Anyway, Fred, thank you for the letter. Sorry I did not uh, let you know about that cricket cover. Um, I'll try to do better next time. Let's keep going. Shelby in Tennessee wrote me a short note uh, saying, Dear Mr. Beck, I want to start this letter by saying thank you for making enjoyable videos. I only started collecting in 2020 because of a challenge in a reckless journal where you collected the different stamps from your mail and I found a lot of stamps that were very interesting. Right now I am collecting stamps with the US President Andrew Jackson on them. I already have a few of them. I know you did a video about North Korean stamps. I did. It was mainly about North Korean propaganda stamps. But do you have any that feature Mercedes Benz? Or like North Korean stamps with a Mercedes Benz on it? Why would I have North Korean stamps? Is there, is there a lot of North Korean stamps with Mercedes Benz on it? Oh wow, I guess there are. Look at that. I wonder why that is. Maybe North Korea likes Mercedes Benz. Mm. Among the many luxuries North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is known to enjoy is the German luxury car brand Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes, Mercedes, and more Mercedes. Bulletproof stretch limos made by Mercedes. Thank you, Shelby. I'm now on the lookout for North Korean stamps with Mercedes-Benz. That would be interesting. Bill from... Where's Bill from? Missouri. Bill from Missouri writes to me, Dear Graham, after viewing several of your YouTube broadcasts, I have renewed some interest in the stamps I collected so many years ago. Enclosed are several plate box that I wish to give you. As fate and employment opportunities unfolded in my life, I entered the postal service as a career letter carrier in May 1983, retiring in December of 2009. Now, Bill has actually written to me in the past and mentioned that when he retired in 2009, he received an honorable service certificate from the USPS. Congratulations, Bill. He enclosed a number of cool things in this package, of which I'm just going to show you a few of them. Check this 1991 badge from the National Association of Letter Carriers, featuring, I think it's his branch, 343. I could be wrong there, apologies in advance. A number of plate blocks. These ones, of course, have a St. Louis, Missouri pre-cancel, 
where Bill worked and where he lives. Bill also sent me some USPS postal badges that went on clothing. I think these were hats and a shirt. You can see a bit of the evolution of the USPS Eagle as it's been represented on its logo. And then he sent me one of these, which is an official mail stamp issued by the USPS for, of course, official mail use only. These stamps are or were only supposed to be used by government agencies. Official mail was also known as penalty mail. And I have one that has been used, but this particular one with the denomination of one uh, was issued back in 1989. Now, I have no idea if you get official mail stamps in a coil or a sheet. I'm assuming you could have, uh, but this particular one is wrapped individually uh, for sale. And you can see at the bottom, it says penalty for private use, $300, which is quite significant, especially in 1989 when this stamp was issued. Now, I believe that I could still get into trouble, $300 worth of trouble, by placing this on an envelope, even though it's one cent postage. I am not going to test it. And I discourage any of you from going ahead and testing it, of course. We have discussed official mail from various different countries on this channel in the past, but uh, you can go to the USPS website to learn more about official mail or penalty mail, in which I don't think there have been new official mail stamps issued since like 2007 or eight. Um, instead, they use just regular franking. But this could be a whole collecting space in which we can explore, maybe something I can explore later uh, in greater detail on this channel. Thank you, Bill. This one is from Jim in France. Jim writes to me, Bonjour Graham, Bonjour Jim. Enclosed are some stamps I accumulated with the words Fete du Fete, Fete du Timbre. 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 Fete, what? Okay, cool. Fete du Timbre. The Google translation is stamp party, but a better translation would be to celebrate or commemorate someone or something. I believe the phrase first appeared in 1938, but I can find no additional info on the topic. Thanks for the entertaining videos you produce, and good luck to you and yours. Thank you, Jim. So, let's look a little more into Fête du Timbre stamps. So, it's really a stamp festival that takes place every year in France. And I'm actually on the website for the French Federation of Philatelic Associations. Fête du, Fête du Timbre. Fête du Timbre is organized throughout France and about a hundred cities participate each year. It's really to promote philately, encourage stamp collecting or at least awareness of stamps. As you already mentioned, Jim, Stamp Day was created in France by the Federation of French Philatelic Societies in the 1930s. But in 1944, the French Postal Service began to issue stamps devoted to Stamp Day. So it looks like the stamps are released around the March time frame by uh, the French Postal Service. The stamps are issued with a particular theme in mind. And of course, Jim, you sent a number of other Fatou Dambre stamps for us to take a look at, mostly centered around comics or cartoons. I see Minnie Mouse, Sylvester and Tweety, Droopy, and then of course there's this charming fellow which you created a cachet for on the letter you sent me. Jim, who is part of the Titoff gang. I don't know anything about this cartoon, but I'm assuming it's a cartoon in France. This stamp was issued in 2005. Keep a look out for Fête du Tombre stamps, and we should probably explore that in more detail in the near future. Thank you, Jim. This is a, this is a really neat one. All the way from Australia, uh, and I can always show it here, but it's too bright. Anyway, this is from Max in Australia. He sent me a prepaid envelope. This is for the year of the tiger 2022. And he actually included a beautiful little mini sheet uh, of the Australian year of the tiger stamps. Now, Max writes to me saying, Dear Graham, I'm 11 years old. Thank you for your brilliant Philately episodes. I stumbled upon one of your videos one day in 2020. I've been a subscriber ever since. In the process, my dad even became a philatelist. One of my favorite videos that you've made is the cricket one. I love cricket. Excellent, Max. One of my duplicate Adelaide oval stamps I will give you to add to your cricket collection. This is awesome. 
going straight in the collection. Thank you, Max. Dad and I have a theory that one of your dogs, Jaunty, is named after a South African cricketer, Jaunty Rhodes. Okay, I can't find I can't find my dog right now, but yes, I actually have a stamp. He is named after John T. Rhodes, and believe it or not, Laura named him, uh, not me. So well done, Max and Max's dad. You guys are correct. One of my favorite videos of yours is the Chinese zodiac one. You inspired us to frame stamps of each member of the family. Note some are replicas. Each stamp represents each year of the family member's birth. For example, my dad is the 1980 year of the monkey. This is a really interesting and cool idea. Framing the Chinese zodiac stamps that correspond to each year of a family member's birth is not only a great connection to philately our hobby, but also makes for a great statement piece in your home, a talking point, something that you can all talk about when people visit. I think this is a fantastic idea. Thank you for sharing this with me and of course all of my viewers, Max, because I have a feeling that uh, a few of us will be copying this. It's brilliant. I love this idea. Now, of course, this brings up the point that we had the Year of the Tiger uh, New Year happen uh, not too long ago and I received something from China uh, thanks to Richard Philatlist who made sure that I was able to get the actual Year of the Tiger stamps that were issued this year. Keep in mind, I am a Year of the Tiger, so this is a particularly special year for me and an important one for me to collect. This year's Year of the Tiger stamps from China were somewhat controversial because a lot of people were disappointed in this year's design, saying that it was a bit boring. And I don't necessarily agree with them. I actually quite like the design. But of course, they found these stamps a lot more boring than the ones that have been issued in the past. An opinion that you're completely entitled to. Let me know in the comments what you think. Now, I have done, of course, a video on uh, Chinese Zodiac stamps. But recently, Richard Philatelist posted an interesting video that goes into a lot more depth about the Chinese Zodiac stamps. So I'm going to put that link in the video description to check out. And of course, in the philatelic space, there's a lot of hype out there when stamps get released by the other countries as well. So I'll put the link to the Punk Philatelist article in which he talks about some of his favorite stamps that were issued this year in regards to Year of the Tiger. Check it out. Max, thank you so much for your lovely letter as well as the Year of the Tiger stamps. I hope to be sending a reply to you soon with a USA Year of the Tiger stamp that you can add to your collection. Okay, have I done 10 yet or do I need to do a few more? I probably just need to do a few more and get to 10. Let's see what else we got. This next one is from Canada. It's actually a two-part uh, mail item from Canada. And it comes from Chris and Eden. So the letter reads, Dear Graham, my uncle and I started collecting stamps and we love watching your videos. Every Saturday, my uncle comes to my apartment and we go on Zoom with my grandparents and we have our own exploring stamp sessions, working with the Canadian stamps in the family collection. That is really neat. We're both super pleased that season four is underway. On Hashtag Flatly in the Mail Day episode, we saw the awesome stuff that fans have been sending you and we decided to do the same. Our main inspiration was our shared interest in the Blue Nose. Besides the stamps that actually feature the boat, there are three Canadian stamps that feature individuals associated with the ship. Captain Angus Walters, designer William Rowe, and folk singer Stan Rogers, who wrote a song about the Blue Nose. My Nana helped me design this envelope and we're sending to you with these three famous Canadians out for a sale on the Blue Nose. In a separate envelope, we're also sending a counter mat from the post office promoting this year's new Blue Nose and the Stan Rogers stamp that both came out at the same time. We're hoping you'd be interested in this unusual philatelic item. First of all, I just have to say this is an excellent cover, Eden and Chris. Uh, of course, it's got the drawing of the Blue Nose with the three famous Canadians going for a ride. I actually didn't know about Stan Rogers' song uh, about the Blue Nose. I would play it here, but I'm not allowed to with copyright, so I'm just going to put the link in the video description for you to go and have a listen. But of course, the cover also has those two Blue Nose stamps that were issued recently, and these stamps have the Capex 22 logo in the bottom left. Capex is the big Canadian stamp show that happens in Toronto, and I'm hoping to be there this year. If anybody watching is able to attend as well, and I encourage you to do so, 
definitely stop me if you see me walking the floor and say hi. I'd love to meet you. And as you mentioned, you have this mat that, that was in the post office advertising the Stan Rogers and the Blue Nose stamps that were issued this year. This is, of course, an unusual philatelic item, but it is certainly a philatelic item nonetheless, featuring the stamps and, of course, the various official first aid covers or uncut press sheet. This will probably be located on the postal counter uh, where you're having your transaction with the postal clerk. Uh, and so this would bring your attention to all these wonderful stamps that are being issued and hopefully encourage you to purchase some. Thank you, Eden and Chris. Always cool to get mail from Canada. And like I said, if you are in the area for Capex, definitely check it out. I have a link in the video description for you to go ahead and learn more. Okay, one more item. And I saw something from New Jersey here. Um, give me a second. I might need to hire an assistant or someone to help me with this. It's getting a bit um, overwhelming, I think. I can't find anything. One at a time. One, two. Three, I got it. I found it. All right. So this postcard is sent to me from Jessica in New Jersey. And yes, of course, I'm featuring this because it is my home state, but there's something interesting here. Hello, Graham. Greetings from a fellow New Jerseyan. You're an inspiration in all the stamp collecting hobby, and I love your show. Thank you very much, Jessica. I'll be sending this postcard at an interesting location, the contract postal unit of Edison, New Jersey, on this day. This is the only zip code, 08820, that is the same as the site of the Edison Memorial Tower which is celebrated in this postcard. Now, Edison is my neighboring town. I live in Piscataway, and if I walk about one and a half to two minutes in a certain direction, I will be in Edison, the township of Edison. And actually, my closest post office is in Edison. Thomas Edison, the wizard of Menlo Park, aside from giving his name to our township, is celebrated for inventing the phonograph, as well as the light bulb. He's fallen out of favor in modern times for other famous inventors, such as Nikola Tesla. I visited the memorial recently and was told an anonymous donor left a stack of these cards with the shop located there. It's cool to think a philatelist made these a hundred years ago. Now, Thomas Edison is one of New Jersey's claims to fame, and New Jersey has a lot of claims to fame. Uh, but Thomas Edison, of course, considered to be the inventor of the phonograph, the first recording of sound, and the light bulb, well, the practical incandescent light bulb. He was the first one to actually come up with a filament that worked and was stable enough to keep a light bulb shining for a full work week. His factory was located in Edison, at least in one point in time. It was once in Newark, and then it moved to Edison, my neighboring town, uh, in a community called Menlo Park, and then eventually moved to West Orange. This is a postcard, by the way. I have a few of these Edison postcards from a New Jersey pack of cards that I got. However, I never really bothered to look up or visit the area where Edison's factory once was. Apparently, today, there is some kind of memorial tower. Edison has been featured on postage stamps. Uh, three particular postage stamps from the United States. The Electric Light Golden Jubilee, which was issued in 1929, celebrating Edison's first lamp. Thomas Edison was still alive when this stamp was issued. There was the three cent commemorative issue uh, from 1947. And of course, this 1977 issue is celebrating the centennial of sound recording for 13 cents. I actually have a commemorative cover with all three stamps uh, that was postmarked on the 100th anniversary of the invention of the incandescent light bulb, proudly mentioning Menlo Park, New Jersey, and postmarked in Edison. Now, things like this completely embarrass me because I'm so keen on exploring things from around the world, but oftentimes I get caught up in that and don't explore my own neighborhood. Now, while I don't intend on going into great detail about Thomas Edison in this episode, maybe we can explore him and his inventions and his importance to New Jersey and the rest of the world in an Exploring Stamps episode at some point. Um, but because of Jessica's postcard, I really want to go and explore that Memorial Tower and see what that's all about. Laura, where's my drone battery? Okay, I'm gonna go and find Laura, 
um, this battery and the Thomas Edison Memorial Tower. So let's go check it out. So, here it is. This is the Thomas Alva Edison Memorial Tower, almost 140 feet tall with what looks to be an incandescent light bulb on the top. I literally didn't know that this was just a 10 minute drive from me. I didn't know this existed. Laura, you didn't even know it existed, right? No, I've never seen it. This is located on the very grounds where Thomas Edison had his factory and came up with over 400 different inventions or patented inventions, including the practical incandescent light bulb as well as the phonograph. And what is interesting is that this street that runs by here called Christie Street was the very first street that was ever lit up by electric light, which of course is an incredibly important part of our history. Now the tower has a dark base and then continues to get lighter towards the top where the light bulb is. This is supposed to symbolize us coming out of a dark age into the world of light, thanks to Thomas Edison's invention of the practical light bulb. I guess this just shows that I should really look into my own town or neighboring towns or even my own state. There might be some really cool things that I don't know about and worth exploring. So before I go home, I'm just gonna walk around. There's a little museum here worth checking out. And uh, of course, I have to do some extreme philately. So thank you, Jessica, for sending me this postcard because you gave me an opportunity to explore this, the Thomas Alva Edison Memorial Tower. Very cool. The electric current is passed through a very fine wire, or filament as it's called, and in so doing, heats it up in just the same way as the resistor of an electric fire. Thank you to everyone for sending mail in for the mail day episodes. Of course, I can't get to every single item that was sent to me, but be assured that I read all of them. And of course, thank you to all viewers for watching. I left a number of links in the video description related to the topics that were discussed. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching and happy exploring.